Sup guys, welcome to another episode of the Portal 2 mapping series. Last episode, I can't really remember what we did, but in this episode, we're going to make some bouncy boingy things. <sighs> Let's go! Okay guys, so, um, here is a basic level I've made. It contains, um, two elevators, one leading into the chamber, and one uh, taking the player away from the chamber. Uh, it also has um, some walls because you obviously need them. Uh, some platforms for the player to walk on. Uh, this is going to be the hole where the bouncy boingy thing will be created. And of course, we have... To create a bouncy boingy thing, first start off by creating a prop dynamic and change the world model to something that resembles a bouncy boingy thing. Then give it a name. I'm calling mine Barry. Say hello Barry. <laughs> After that, create an info underscore target and place it to where you want the player to land after being launched by Barry. Call it Barry underscore target. Then make a trigger underscore catapult brush on top of Barry. If you want Barry to launch you upwards, change the launch direction to negative 90, 0, 0. Otherwise, I've changed mine to negative 45, 0, 0. By the way, make sure you set the launch target to the target Otherwise, Barry won't know what the hell he's doing. You'd also want to change the speed as well. I've set the player speed to 500 and the physics object speed to 650. Why have I done this? Well, cubes, for example, are typically going to be much lighter than the player. And the reason why I know this is because I've been called fat many times while playing the game. Finally, to get Barry to actually do his job, click on the outputs tab. Yeah, thanks, thanks. Hammer moment, am I right? Click on the Outputs tab, create an output called on catapulted. set the target entity to Barry, the target input to set animation, and finally add a parameter called angled. Make sure you spell it exactly how I've done. If we run our map, you should see that Barry will very much do his boingy bouncy business. However, there is still a problem. You see, Barry is usually quite noisy. And right now, Barry is not making any noise, so we need to change that. You can do this by creating an ambient underscore generic and calling it, wow, Barry can speak now. Find a nice Barry sound. That's a great noise right there. Make sure in the flags, is not looped and start silent are checked. All you have to do now is make Barry speak whenever you trigger the trigger catapult. If we run our map now, that's right, Barry. I did show everyone how to make bouncy boingy things. Okay, so for this last bit of the tutorial, I'm going to give a shout out to two comments from people who watch this series. Uh, the first was uh, talking about how in episode four, the way I implemented indicator lights was outdated and they actually provided a much more efficient way of uh, utilizing indicator lights um, I can't remember their name but I, I'll put that comment on screen right now uh, um, sub subscribe to them and the second one was just a commenter asking how you can link two buttons to one door uh, so that's what we're gonna try and do in this bit uh, we're gonna try and get these two buttons linked to this door right here uh, so right now we have two cubes here, we have two buttons, and we have a door. We have some indicator lights here. Now, the first comment did mention that uh, the, the two different types of overlays, the indicator lights floor and the indicator lights wall, uh, it really doesn't matter what you use because they both are exactly the same. But I've still used in the indicator lights floor overlay for the floor and the wall overlay for the wall because I feel like if I don't do that, it might cause like a... A, a rupture in in the valve space time continuum and i don't really want to do that so i've just i've just kept it consistent and i've grouped all these overlays together uh this is called indicator lights left and this group is called indicator lights right now the way we are going to link these indicator lights to the buttons here 
is instead of using texture toggles and all that stuff, uh, we're actually going to use a different type of entity, and this is going to be called a prop indicator indicator panel. And uh, let's just exit out of uh, full screen mode, and let's just position this to where we want it to be. And let's get it sort of half flush of the wall. So like half of it is inside the wall and then half of it is sort of sticking out. Uh, and then what we're going to do is we are going to name it uh, panel right. And then I'm going to duplicate this to the other side and I'm going to call this panel left. Uh, it's gone like this weird bluey green color because I have another map open with uh, a panel named the exact same thing so that's why it's doing that for me. I'm using that map as a reference because I'm kind of stupid at the moment. And then what we're gonna do is where it says indicator lights we just use the eyedropper tool and then we just click on the indicator lights left and you should see it display here. Click apply and then you should see this line pointing to it. So I'm going to click on this one and see this one pointing to this indicator right here. And then the second thing we need to do is we need to make another entity and this is called a math counter. That's right, we are going to be doing a little bit of calculations. So if you don't like that, well, I don't blame you. Uh, so yeah, let's make a math counter. Uh, let's move it. Well, it doesn't really matter where you position it, but uh, I like my map to be neat. We're going to name this. I'm going to call this button counter. And then I'm going to set the maximum legal value to two because there are two buttons. If you want more buttons, uh, let's say if you want f uh, 19 buttons, I don't know why you'd want that many buttons, really. You probably have some weird fetish. All you have to do is uh, um, um, you, you put 19 for the max value, but um, any sane person would, would have no more than about three. Then what we've got to do is add an output, and then all we got to do is do on hit max. Once it hits that value, then we are going to open the door, which is called exit underscore door. Name your doors. That's a good tip. Name your doors. And then we're going to copy this on change from max. So let's say if it's changed from two to one or zero, then of course the door is going to shut, isn't it? Uh, yeah, so there we go. The door will shut once it changes from its max value. And then all we got to do is link the buttons. That's literally all you got to do. So on pressed, first of all, indicator lights or the, uh, the indicator panels rather, because that is controlling everything. On pressed panel left, because this is the left button, uh, we're going to check, and then also we're going to open the door as well. Nope, that's not what we're doing. Sorry, we're not doing that. What we're actually doing is adding a value of one, and of course we have to do the complete opposite when the button is not pressed. So on unpressed button counter, uh, we're going to subtract zero. Sorry, what? D did I actually just subtract zero? I'm a bit of a thick-headed imbecile sometimes. Um, what you're actually meant to do is subtract one. I, I discovered this a bit later on. Uh, as I said before, I am a bit stupid right now. So yeah, forgive me, please. And then panel left, uncheck. And we're going to copy all of this, head on to this button, paste, and then just change it according to the indicator lights we are using. So this will actually be panel right and everything else should be it at what? What did I just do? We don't subtract zero, do we? We subtract one. Yeah, you dumbass. And then finally, yeah, I think that's it. That's all we have to do. There's no finally. That was the finally. Let's just finally, let's run the map. There you go. <laughs> Right, so this is what our complete map looks like so far. We have an elevator, we spawn in, and we open the door, and then we have an aerial fatha platter, which we can jump on, do its bouncy boingy business. We have the cube, put it on this button. You can see the indicator lights are triggered. However, the door is not open, and we can do the exact same thing on this side. But if we put both cubes on here, 
The door opens, and then we take one off. The door shuts. It works. Perfectly worked, little bloody. And then we head through the elevator, and then we go up to the heavens above. All right, so that's the end of this episode. If you enjoyed it, make sure you leave a like on the video and subscribe. Yes, I'm doing that in my videos now. I'm now asking people to subscribe because um, it works. So yeah, let, let, let's, let's get to 2K, guys. Let's get to 2K. Yeah, uh, have a nice day and, and piss off. Let's go. <laughs>